Hey guys, it's Laura. Welcome back to Wellness Wednesday. And this week I want to talk to you all about one of the leading causes of aging and disease progression, and that is oxidative stress. So I'm going to explain to you what it is, why it's important, and what you can do about it. So first of all, what is oxidative stress? It's an imbalance in your body between free radicals and antioxidants. So you have free radicals that are unstable, they're missing an electron, they tend to bounce around, they can interact with your molecules and cells and do damage at a cellular level. So they can damage your DNA, your proteins, your fatty acids. And what happens here is antioxidants come in and they donate an electron to the free radical. It stabilizes it, stops that damage from occurring and calms everything down. The problem is that oxidative stress occurs when you have more free radicals than you do antioxidants. And unfortunately, this is very common in everybody today because we are constantly being exposed to things that cause free radicals. So if you wanna visualize this, Think of an apple. If you cut an apple open and you expose it to air, it immediately starts to turn brown. This is the oxidative stress process happening in your apple. And the same thing is happening in your cells. So think of your cells being damaged, they're dying, they're mutating, they're not good, they, and it leads to then disease progression. And if you look up online, pubmed.org is one of my favorite sites. It has all of the scientifically peer-reviewed journal literature. And if you just search oxidative stress, you will literally pull up tens of hundreds of thousands of articles about oxidative stress and the damage that it does. If you type in oxidative stress and some sort of disease, most likely you're going to find a connection because oxidative stress has been linked to over 200 diseases and the aging process. So it is something that's really important to be aware of. It's unfortunately all around us. Like I mentioned, you're exposed to things every day that cause free radical damage. It could be your diet. If you eat something high in sugar, fat, or alcohol, that's going to cause free radical damage. If you are exposed to pollution, radiation, ozone, pesticides, if you have a high stress environment, if you have a lack of sleep, these are just a few of the things that can cause free radicals in your body and that's doing damage at a cellular level. So basically, it's unavoidable. And this is why it's important because you want to be able to try to reduce the exposure to free radicals and increase your antioxidants at the same time to try to bring that balance back in play. Because if you can prevent that oxidative stress or lower your oxidative stress, you're impacting your whole body at a cellular level, which is pretty amazing if you think about it. So let me tell you some things that you can do to prevent or reduce uh, free radicals and increase your antioxidants. One of which you might have already guessed and that is eat more antioxidant rich foods. And we've heard this one, right? We heard blueberries are high in antioxidants. Um, there's also several other things, turmeric, garlic, uh, onions, carrots, berries, cherries, lots of things, leafy greens, lots of things have antioxidant properties. And this is why it, they tell you to eat the rainbow because you're trying to get a bunch of those different antioxidants. Tr truth is people don't get enough fruits and vegetables every single day and you honestly can't eat the way out of your free radical damage you cannot possibly eat enough to combat what you're doing but it's a good start so you want to try to eat antioxidant rich foods another thing you can do is moderate exercise inflammation and heavy exercise causes temporary inflammation but inflammation in your body in general also contributes to oxidative stress and so if you do a regular moderate exercise it's actually beneficial if you do a harsh exercise then it can be a little damaging temporarily while you have the increase of inflammation or if you're living with something like an autoimmune condition that has a low level of inflammation all the time that's doing damage as well so regular moderate exercise smoking smoking is a huge thing because it's carcinogens and it is causing free radical damage so quit smoking if you are smoking reduce your amount of smoke for secondhand and thirdhand smoke as well because they all can have an effect on those free radicals avoiding chemicals this is huge we are exposed to tons of chemicals they're in everything they're in your personal care products so read your labels and reduce your exposure to chemicals i basically have switched all of my household over to non-toxic personal care products cleaning products 
and uh, I try to limit that as much as possible. I even make my own laundry detergent. So I'm trying to limit my exposure in any way to chemicals in my home because that's where you spend the majority of your time. And it goes beyond just personal care and cleaning products also. Things in your home give off chemicals like carpeting, like a new carpet or a new mattress. So just keep that in mind as you're shopping and try to reduce your chemical load in your home, especially where you have an environment that you can control. And if you guys are interested in what I use in my personal care products, just put info below and I'll get you the link for um, my recommendations that cover all of these things. Uh, sunscreen, UV radiation does damage your cells. And so you wear sunscreen on a daily basis all the time and that will help prevent that. Decrease your alcohol intake, because as I mentioned before, a diet high in alcohol, fat, or sugar all contribute to free radicals. So if you can limit your alcohol intake, you're, you're putting yourself in the right direction there. Getting plenty of sleep is key. As I mentioned in another video, uh, sleep is so important. It's probably one of the unsung heroes about the whole repair and restore process in your body. So make sure you're getting an adequate amount of sleep, seven to nine hours a night, um, no ex excuses there. Set a, a specific bedtime and then um, work your way back from when you need to be waking and so set, set that specific bedtime and try to stick with that and get enough adequate, deep, restful sleep. Also with that, don't do anything right before bed that will interrupt that sleep either. <laughs> like watch TV or blue lights um, or do something that's caffeinated or anything like that. Um, make environmentally conscious choices. This goes back to re reducing overall pollution levels in the planet. So if you're, you are you want to make environmentally conscious choices about what you can use, use reusable items, not throwaway items, you're going to carpool with friends, just kind of reducing your carbon footprint by local, by sustainable products, and that will help you reduce that overall pollution lo level. Um, avoid overeating because overeating is also associated with free radical damage. So make sure that you're stopping, uh, you know, about when you're 80% full and let your brain catch up to the fact that your stomach is full. It takes a while for that signal to go down and say, okay, stop eating because you are really full. So try to avoid overeating as well. And the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is activating something called the NERF2 pathway. This is also fascinating. You can look this up again on PubMed as well. NRF2, it is a actually a, an antioxidant pathway in your body. So when you activate this pathway, you are turning on your body's own natural antioxidants, something like glutathione. And glutathione is way more powerful than tons and tons and tons of blueberries. So the information that you're sending to your body antioxidant wise, you can't even eat as much. If you activate this pathway, I personally take a supplement that activates the NERF2 pathway that's clinically proven to reduce your oxidative stress by 40% in 30 days. And I have noticed some great benefits while I've been on that. I've taken it for years. So again, if you want more information about what I personally use, put info down below in the comments. I'm happy to give you all my recommendations and take them or leave them, but I find that it's helpful and it's one way that I can control what is done to reduce oxidative stress in my body. This particular supplement, it's known as the Little Yellow Pill and it was actually featured on an ABC primetime report as um, also and I can send you that report too. So again, I hope you guys found this interesting. Oxidative stress is something that's really important. It's, it's kind of an underlying root cause issue of so many different diseases and aging. Um, in fact, speaking of aging, that little yellow pill is clinically proven to extend your life by seven to nine years. Hello, hello, seven to nine years. And that was the study done by the Nas Nat National Institutes of Health. So we're talking about some major stuff here. But Oxidative stress, I feel like, is going to come out more and more as time goes on, as scientific uh, literature becomes more and more familiar with this as an underlying root cause for disease and aging, uh, which it has been, again, linked to over 200 different diseases and aging. So I hope you found this interesting. I, I'm fascinated by this kind of stuff. I'm kind of geeked out with the nerdy scientific things. Uh, so I wanted to break it down for you in some way that you could understand. But it is important to understand that oxidative stress is happening all the time, every day, on a cellular level. It's not necessarily something you can feel. 
uh, happening, but it is happening. And you've always got to fight between the free radicals and the antioxidants in your body. So you want to do whatever you can to reduce free radicals, increase the antioxidants, and help right that balance and reduce overall oxidative stress. And this is not stress stress, which is also good to reduce, but oxidative stress is something that happens on a cellular level. Okay, so I hope you guys are having a fabulous week. Until next week, I will see you back again for another Wellness Wednesday. Bye!